Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Lapix. Got another video for you guys today. Today we got the Seagate hard drive here. Uh, it's an external drive, and we're gonna be taking a look at it because we need data recovery, right? We need the customer needs their data, and we want to make sure that we get the data off. So, what are we gonna be doing today? Well, we want to actually see about this. So go ahead, plug it in, see what's going on. It looks like a very small drive, though. It says 500 gigs on the back there. It's a USB drive. Um, what do we know about USB drives? If you actually watched our previous videos. Uh, we explained a little bit of something about this, especially when there's a USB-C or USB enclosure here, right? So let's go see the symptoms here. Let's go ahead and plug it in. I think it's going to pop up right away, so I'll show that. Um, watch even the corner here. You'll probably see the screen right when I plug it in. <laughs> We're get some error here. Okay, you can see this pop up, at least if I can capture that. Uh, wrong device. There we go. So we have this here, and we say USB device is not recognized. It's not functioning. Blah, blah, blah. It's not recognizing it. Well, okay. Um, most likely, then, it's not going to be in our disk manager here. So let's go to that. Let's go ahead and bring this over there. I'm trying to load the disk configuration information. It's taking a long time. That means something's trying to happen, but it's not happening, right? So a healthy drive usually is pretty quick, uh, straightforward. Let's see if anything comes up here. Well, man, I always off click that one. Uh, there we go. There we go. Okay, so we have a lot of our main drives here, just our major disks, because we have uh, four hard drives in there anyway, but it's not showing up here at all. So nothing. So it did malfunction right, and there could be a data issue there for, for reading, or there could be like a short on the board, or something like that's going on there. So we want to see what's going on. So what do we know about these USB drives? Now, right, these have an enclosure. So we want to see, we want to eliminate something, right, to get to this. So what we want to do is we want to open this up and actually see what's going on inside there. And we want to detach it because we, so it has one of these USB ports here. And whoop, you can see on the side. Now, if you watch the other ones before, we actually showed some of these um, for like recovery, especially on a best case scenario, right? If something does fail. This one has a pretty good indicator that there's something else going on with the communication between the drive itself in there and as well as the separate USB board. Because usually these ones have like a separate type of USB board on there, but that's where we're going to be taking a look at because this is an older one. I think it says 500 gigs. It's pretty small. It's a pretty small drive. So anything can happen for that. Uh, also, there could be something right with the major problem. Um, with the PCB inside there that's calling it causing a short to do that but so a big point of failure for something like this would be right is where you put the input in in the beginning from and then that will go from there to there but I think I'll explain it better if I actually just take it open it and show you guys from there so let's do that okay so these have to open in a certain way right so there's a little attachment here so when we take it out of the enclosure let's go ahead and do that it's like a start at the edge usually the bottom is a good place to start right Okay, so this comes up. You can see here we have a regular Seagate drive there. Looks like a two and a half inch drive. And it should lift up there. There we go. Just lift it up because there's a little angle there. Put that to the side because we're not worried about that too much anymore. So we have this drive, right? And we still have this little uh, covering over here for protection. Then we need to remove that. Let's take out the drive here. Should be four screws. A little bit tough there. Actually, lift this up a little bit. We have a board exposed, and we actually just this should just slide out actually. It should just be a regular SATA connection here to the board because there's a few things that are a little stuck here or we can lift it up, I guess. <laughs> lift this up, it should just kind of come out.
There we go. Oh. So here we go. So what we want to do is we want to isolate this because this can be a problem, especially if there's any type of damage to it. Right. This is just an easy little conversion from uh, USB to SATA there. Right. So let's go ahead and see if just removing something like this is going to help make it work. I believe we will get different results unless there's a problem with this itself here, unless we can see obvious physical damage or something else like that. So let's go ahead and just plug this in. I'm going to plug it into my sled here. I'm going to bring that over. Let's go ahead and plug this in, see if it's going to make a difference. Is the light on? Yep, light's on. Light on there. Oh, I don't have it connected, so let's go ahead and connect it. Okay, and actually something did pop up. We we'll see it here now. Uh, we see that there is actually an expansive drive, and it's a 500 gig drive, and it looks just like the other one, right? It has the same type of picture, some type of icon here. Let's double click it. We obviously see there's a lot of data here. Looks like a lot of documents and stuff on there. So um, that looks to be about it. Uh, we'll make sure we back this up immediately, and really, yep, that should be good. Okay, so the way of thinking is because there's we see the error, there's like an input output type error. Um, we want to start obviously where the main part of focus is. When you have something like that where it's not being recognized, we know that this has a lot, this is where the um, power and data actually come in through here, through a board, and it's through a USB connection. So we have not only do we have a data line, we also have a, have a power line, right? And voltage is going to go through there. So if there's any type of failure, if there's anything else going on, there, uh, we want to eliminate that source. And that's where the source is going into, especially if you do any type of board repair or anything like that. It makes sense because you want to start aware, um, especially like for Windows ones, if you have like a regular barrel connector there, you want to start where the power input's coming from because that's going to be the highest point, uh, really right where the voltage is coming in from. So if you start from there and then you work your way towards where there's actual short, this is kind of the same type of thing. Um, same type of idea, same type of way of thinking, especially we do, we do board level repairs well day recoveries, but it's the same type of idea uh, with the same thing, but it looks to be good. We were able to get the data, so you see the data and everything looks great. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching watch this video on the Seagate drive for doing data recovery, especially on like a Seagate external drive. Um, this is one of those type of uh, symptoms that you can see. Obviously, there's input output error that we were getting. It's very easy to narrow down. On these ones, these ones have a separate USB board that's going on there. It's not like a typical um, newer ones like Western Digital don't have something like this where it's a separate USB board. Usually it's part all of one connection there. Um, usually on the higher tier models too, um, they all have the board in. There's a level of encryption. It makes it a lot more difficult. Uh, this brand makes it a little bit more easier, especially on the older ones that you have a separate one. You can isolate more problems on there and they keep the drive um, for more convenience to build a drive or a SATA drive and then they have a USB connection where the Western Digital or some of the newer ones right they'll have all like a USB-C connection uh, there for it and then it'll just be USB-C drive the whole way through and then you have to convert it to SATA you have to do a lot of things to work with a device that does especially if you have something like especially if you have something like the newer of drives where um, if you need to work with them outside of that you can't just replace a board or something you need to uh, because they're usually encrypted so that makes it a lot more difficult it's a whole other video we have lots of videos actually talking about that if you want to see that one like western digital um, SATA conversion stuff that one's a little more interesting but this is a nice one just to show you guys there um, on the basic troubleshooting and make it very easy to get the data off right so again it's a very very lucky situation there because usually you have head problems you have mechanical issues lots of other things there but we see the errors, we can figure out the problem. So hope you guys are watching and learned something today. If you did, please leave a like, really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. See you guys next video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.